Good morning. Welcome to Prospect Street United Methodist Church. Um, please be sure and sign the registration pads located at the end of each row. And let's prepare our hearts and minds and souls to worship God and remember our call to be the body of Christ. Uh, just, I'm sorry, I forgot to remind you. Um, due to uh, the kitchen being used just about the whole of yesterday, and the fact that uh, Linda Keir had fallen at home and um, she has sprained her ankle, the harvest dinner that was supposed to happen after church is not happening today. Just wanted to let you know. So you can go downstairs, you're more than welcome, but dinner will not be served. So <laughs> you, you will have to do that on your own. It's not canceled, it is postponed, and it is now going to happen sometime in January. And my thought is we can have a Thanksgiving dinner anytime, right? Amen. So. Sorry. We can still be thankful for whatever we have. Uh, let us uh, say our mission statement together. We are united to love God, to grow in our commitment to Christ, to serve others and welcome all people. Now let us remain in the attitude of worship as we silently listen to the prelude.
Please stand and let us say the call to worship responsively. In that day, you will say, Although you were angry with me, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Let us say the opening prayer together. God of all creation, we invite you to come and sustain us. Redeem us and comfort us in our weakness. We affirm our trust in you for our secured future and lean on your everlasting arm. Amen.
Isn't it great to have the bells back playing again? <clears throat> it sounds so cool. And uh, Susan, thank you for playing my spot. I never wanted to play that song anyway. I, I wasn't supposed to be here this week, and so um, I had started, but um, uh, Susan took my spot, and it's just, you guys are just so cool. As the ushers come forward, <clears throat> this is a time that we, are ha we have the opportunity to be able to give back to God, to our church, so that all may know that God lives today. So let us pray. O oh Lord, we ask for a blessing upon these tithes, these offerings. And Lord, multiply this offering today so that your word may be spread through all the earth that all may be healed. In your name we pray, amen.
boxes to bring in. Just loves me. There's one more. Can you get it? Wow. 52 Operation Child shoeboxes. <clears throat> Emma, 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 give each kid one. <clears throat> that is, I think, a record. And I know there's still more out there. So if you have a box that you haven't brought in yet, it won't be amongst these, bring it in. They aren't delivering them till Friday, so you still have a chance to drop them off. This is just so awesome to look at. Kids, on Christmas morning, or even before, each of you, I know, will be opening up more than one gift, right? You will know you're going to have more than a gift. There are children around the world who will not have anything to open. But because people here and people all over the place, all over the world, get a shoebox and buy things and put in it for a boy and a girl, they get to open up something. Isn't that amazing? And that's why we do this. It's a very important ministry. And today, we have you bring them in and the box that you're holding on to, I want you to hold on to that tight, okay? We don't know who will get that gift, but you know how excited you are when you get a gift? We're going to pray that whoever receives these gifts will be just as excited and it'll be just what they've wanted. So let's pray. Oh Lord our God, we ask your blessings upon each and every box. Not just for the contents, Lord, but for the person who will receive them. We pray that they can use whatever it is, but more importantly, that this prayer goes to them. That they know that they are loved by you and by others throughout the world. Lord, be with them for whatever need they have. Give them food, give them shelter, give them peace, give them love. And we ask all these blessings in your wonderful name. Amen. All right. Give those boxes back to Emma and she'll put them on the pile. And then you can go upstairs for junior worship.
Where else can you go that a kid gets so excited about going to junior church, they take off and leave their sister sitting here all alone? <laughs> but it's a miracle. She just put her hand out, and out she came to me. So anyway, oh, what a day. We want to remember the Hoss family, all of them. With the loss of uh, Ruth, what a shock. Um, she is surely going to be missed in this church. But what a send-off we all gave her. And uh, the stories will go on living forever and ever and ever. Uh, there were some stories I'd never heard, and now I want to hear more. So, <laughs> um, Also, let us remember um, the Sherry Eisler family. She passed away during the night after a long illness. And that's from Judy and John Tong. A lot of people will be traveling this coming week, and Lynn Bayer asks prayers for travel mercies as she travels alone to New Jersey. She hasn't made the trip alone for a while, so uh, let us remember that's a long way to travel on your own. Many people will be flying, and uh, so um, all of those who are traveling, we want to remember. I had somebody else. Um, Dixie Wallace had surgery on Thursday. She had a hip replacement. We want to remember her, um, and uh, um, luckily, her kids are coming in to take care of her, because if I was Dixie, I don't think I'd want Wally looking after me. <laughs> no, <coughs> no offense, Wally. I don't even see where he is right now, but that's all right. Word will get to him. That's okay. Um, and, but anyway, let's remember her for a quick recovery. She is doing extremely well, uh, and I thought there was another one, too. Um, gone out of my head. Oh, well. God knows, right? <clears throat> Let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Oh, Lord, our God, we come before you today full of thankfulness and gratitude. It is a joy to see how much this church is willing to give give of themselves, give their time, give their money, and Lord, give to others. Lord, we thank you for the ministries and the outreach opportunities that we have, which show our love for you to others. Lord, continue to pour out your blessings upon this church, each and every one. Lord, we remember those who have lost loved ones recently. Comfort them and bring them peace. Continue the stories flowing, Lord. It has been an honor to know those people. And they're not forgotten, and we will see them again. So, Lord, we thank you for your promise in that. We remember all those who are traveling and for families who will be getting together in the next coming weeks. Lord, families are not perfect, and, but we only are born into one family. So Lord, help us to be able to love them the best that we can. Lord, we remember our shut-ins, each and every one. Pour your blessings over them and give them that extra dose of love today so they know they are not forgotten. Lord, we pray for our world with messed up. Lord, we pray for peace. We don't know when that is going to come, but Lord, we pray for it to come quickly. Lord, you can come back anytime soon. And Lord, we pray for our own families. You know the needs out there. And now together, we lift up the prayer that you taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. As we, that's a, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I remember. Oh. <coughs> glory be to. Please stand for the reading of the scripture from Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they, be, will they come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and the crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but only a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered a curse. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them or plant and others eat. For as the day of a tree, so will it be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not toil in vain, nor bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by, my, by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all the holy mountain, saith the Lord. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I remembered what I was going to say, and that is um, I haven't had to send people out to find someone because Doris is back with us today. And Doris, it is so wonderful to have you back here. <clears throat> I had told her, you know, hey, I announced I was going to send people after you. We're going to come and get you. So she felt that threat and came anyway. So it's great to see you. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, as we are gathered as your chosen people, open up our ears and our eyes so that we can hear your word to us today. And then challenge us, Lord, to go out into the world and to spread what we know to be true to others. In your name we pray. Amen. On Monday, we witnessed a choosing. One of our own, Ruth Haas, chosen by God to be taken to her eternal home. Do you remember what our theme was for this year? I know probably you've forgotten it. Unless you read the wall out there, it's on there. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last Ruth was chosen of God, and boy, did she bear much fruit. When all of that happened on Monday, it changed the course of my thinking for today. 
first of all, I wasn't going to be here, and then I was. So I told Pastor Joe, hey, that service that we've already planned that you're going to do, let's put it in the hopper because uh, we'll use it another time. And I had to think, what am I going to do? And then on Monday, I changed my mind. I opened up my devotion, and it was this reading from Isaiah. Now, for most people, it wouldn't have had an effect on them. But you see, we have just completed eight weeks of kind of quickly going through the book of Isaiah. So to open and see this passage, which we had just read last week as our closing, I knew God was saying, you need to talk about this. It's an important reminder that we are all chosen people. And this is a message of hope which we need to hear as we head into Thanksgiving and Advent. So what's going on in this book of Isaiah at this time? And as we began to read it, if you didn't know it was from Isaiah, you might have guessed it was from Revelation. Does it not sound similar? You're going to see the similarities in a moment. So what's going on is, in the 8th century before Christ, Isaiah began to prophesy. Israel was in a really bad way. (laughs) Israel's in a bad way today, aren't they? There were two kingdoms and they were divided. The northern kingdom was the kingdom of Israel. And the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. And that was where Jerusalem was and all the surrounding areas. And Isaiah began to prophesy to all the Israelites, repent, turn your lives around, be faithful. At one part in the book of Isaiah, and you know, I'm going to keep the suspense there because I know you just want to run home and read the book of Isaiah today. But I will tell you at one point, the people turn to him and say, would you stop treating us like children? We don't want to hear what you have to say. And the northern kingdom, just like he predicted, was taken over by the Assyrians and people, many people were killed and the Israelites were scattered everywhere. And they would never come back together. The southern kingdom held And a lot of that was due to the good king they had on the throne at that time, King Hezekiah. God blessed his reign and saved Israel for the moment. But Isaiah continued to preach and said, hold on, because there is a time coming pretty soon when Babylon and the Babylonians will come and take over the Assyrians And you will be taken captive all the way to Babylon. Many times people were thrown out of their houses. They did not have enough to eat. Even their water was cut off. And they were constantly under siege. There were false prophets telling them what to do. And they had to make a choice. They continued to worship idols and false gods. Doesn't that kind of sound like our world today? Things haven't really changed much, have they? But Isaiah continues to speak and says, for you who are faithful, hang in there, chosen ones. Hang in there. Because there's going to be a time after you're taken captive for 70 years that King Cyrus from Persia, will be raised up, and he will take over the Babylonians, and you, he will enable you to come back to the beloved Jerusalem, and once again the temple will be rebuilt, and Jerusalem will be a great city again. Now the amazing thing about this is, 2,500 years later, we know that all of that happened. But King Cyrus hadn't even been born yet. 
Persia wasn't even a nation yet. And yet Isaiah, because of his connection to God, was able to tell people what was going to happen. Isn't that amazing? Not only that, but Isaiah was saying, this is going to happen in the near future. But in the distant future, a future we are still awaiting today, Isaiah began to talk about the end times. John the Revelator in Revelation talks about that also. And we think his words are new, which they are because he had a vision and God reaffirmed things. But a lot of what John says in Revelation actually came from the book of Isaiah. What a magnificent person he was. Isaiah even predicted that the Messiah was going to be born and that he wasn't going to be a great warrior but that he was going to be a servant king. He would live a compassionate lifestyle, healing and helping people. He would suffer and die. But hang on, chosen people, because he was going to be raised up and be the king of all. Isaiah predicted that way before Jesus had even been born. These words today reminded the Israelites then and us today that God came and loves all people. We're not Israelites and God loves us. Jesus came for the Gentiles, us, as well as the Israelites. And each and every one of us is chosen. Amen? We, like the Israelites, are not to keep God's love to ourselves, but we're to spread it to everyone, even if they won't listen. We're still supposed to spread it in the way we act, the things we do, the things we don't do. You hear me say that every week, and I'm never going to stop because I'm supposed to tell you that. We need to hear that. Let us take a look at what Isaiah really said in this passage that we heard this morning. He said we have to look forward because there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Whew, I'm glad because this old earth is getting a little scary to live in. All will be new. And the old will be wiped away and we will remember it no more. Thank goodness. God is continuing to create, Isaiah says, and all human life will be valued. Basic needs will be met for everyone. There will be no need for us to make shoeboxes to send to children around the world who have nothing. Young, old, their needs will be met. Abled, disabled, free, incarcerated, the strong and the frail. All needs will be met. There will be enough food, enough shelter, and enough love for everyone. Think about that. I can hardly wrap my head around that. There will be no weeping, no distress, nothing to have to worry about. Woo, that makes me excited. And no fear. Isaiah says, children will never die. Deb Welch came in this morning and told me some time ago we prayed for a cousin of hers who was pregnant with twins and was having some trouble. And when they were born, one twin only lasted 24 hours. Well, not very long ago, the second twin passed away also. And yesterday, they had a memorial service for them. And she said how hard it was for them. And I think about this promise. Children 
will never die. And Isaiah says, a hundred is young. Wow. I like that idea. I'm not even in my 60s yet, and I feel like I'm getting older by the second. A hundred is young. And all will work together for the good of all. Is that not ideal? This is the life that God has planned for us all along. And Isaiah said 2,500 years ago, hold on, hang in there, chosen ones. It's coming. Isaiah says, even enemies will eat and work together. Is that a beautiful picture or what? Now hold that picture in your mind. Because also this week, I reflected on just this last week's world headline news to compare it with this beautiful picture that Isaiah has said. Here is what's happened in the world. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Just this week, in Iran, there was fighting and demonstrations because fuel had been rationed. In Hong Kong, people have been protesting for quite a while, and there were riots. But this week, the soldiers put down their rifles and marched out with brooms to clear up the streets until the fighting continues. In Prague, there were anti-government protests which involved over 200,000 people. In Paris, it's the one-year anniversary of the Yellow Vest organization. And do you remember a year ago, they came out in protest over fuel prices. They had protests and they turned violent. In Bolivia, after there was um, a new, uh, um, words are failing me, a new, um, anyway, the, the president stood down. I can't even think. The president Morales stood down. People had wanted that for a while because he was corrupt. And then the whole country went crazy and there's been riots. In Sri Lanka, they had elections also. That's the word I was looking for. And there was violence during them. In Australia, the bushfires have got so out of hand. They're the worst that they've had in years. And it is even now endangering the beautiful city of Sydney. In Venice, they've had the worst flooding in St. Mark's Square for 50 years. Years, and it has threatened the safety of St. Mark's Cathedral. The news in Israel is that Gaza fired missiles into Jerusalem and, and around Israel. And Israel is now discussing how they will fight back. And in, in the UK, for the first time ever, they are facing yet another general election the second in this year. And here in the United States, we are facing public impeachment hearings again. And all over the world, we talk about climate change. That's the state of our world today. Doesn't it sound like the state of the world Isaiah was talking about? You see, people say, oh, we're coming to the end. Things are bad, and they truly are. And everything that is happening is truly scriptural, but it's been like that for a long time. Hold on, chosen people, because the best is yet to come. Here is what John the Revelator said. In uh, Revelation 21, 1 through 5. And then I saw a new heaven 
and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Amen? For the old order of, th of things has passed away. And he who sat on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Wow, are those words that I need to hear today. How about you? No matter what happens in the world, no matter what happens in our own lives and in our, the lives of our families, hang in there, chosen ones, because it's going to get better. Ruth is in a better place. People you and I know who have passed on are in a better place, and we will be with them sometime. I just want to say, Jesus, come again right now, right here. I'm good. I could go. Leave this world behind. But God says, it's not time yet. You still have some work to do. You meaning you and me. God says, I have not forgotten you. You are mine. And I am in the process right now of making all things new. But for now, hold on to these trustworthy and true words. And don't keep them to yourself. Spread them around. So today I leave you with two challenges. The first one, what promise did you hear today? that can hold, you can hold on to this week to get you through? And what promise have you heard that you know someone else needs to hear? Won't you share that with them this week? Let's pray. Oh God of all the earth, God of the new heavens and the new earth to come, God who is creating all things new, we worship you today. Lord, we give you all the thanks and the praise and the glory and the splendor and the majesty. Lord, that's why we're here, and it's sometimes easy to forget. We are yours. You chose us. So, Lord, today we choose you. Show us the way, give us the courage, give us the comfort, and give us the hope we need to go forth from here and live for you. In your name we pray, amen. Let us stand and sing our final song. <clears throat>
Well, if you don't feel good leaving here today, then you haven't had your ears open, you haven't heard the music, you haven't been praising God. Let us pray. Lord, as we go forth from this place, go before us, go behind us, go beside us. Keep our mind on heaven. Be with our hearts and allow us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and the hope of what's yet to come. We ask this through God the Father, Jesus the Son, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, and everybody says, Amen. Amen.